Well, here we are on Monday morning, and I'm, I'm, I don't know, should I say to Pat that uh, we are both fat heads, or should I say that uh, I'm a bigger fat head than he is, because both of us said quite solemnly last Friday, oh yes, England will win the Euros. <laughs> England didn't win the Euros. The Euros. Yeah. You see, I was relying on you, Pat, I, all, all my predictions never come out. But I assume no, no, no. You did. No, you know, I was working on the basis, um, and we did. I think we both said that Spain was the best team. But yeah. you know, sometimes yeah. you watch something and you say, England were so jammy on three occasions that I thought, you know, the, uh, I think I said the stars were aligned for them, and I thought, you know, they're just going to be so jammy, they're going to win on Sunday, even though Spain are the best team. Now, oh. unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you want to look at it, Spain, the best team. Were the best team on the night and richly deserved their one. Absolute, Jude. The, the, the England again, sort of totally underwhelmed. You know they have all this, the 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 good players, the star players, all who play very well for their teams. Like Bellingham was, was a star player in Spain this year. John Stones is part of the Manchester City team that got to the sort of the European final a couple of times. He's a great player. You know all these. You can go on through the team. And so on. But see, when they're playing for England, I don't know whether it's the coach, I don't know whether it's the style. I know the way Jude, the uh, really good continental teams, the France, the Span the Spanish and all, the way they can play out from the back and this lovely controlled football. See, all England could do was depend on was the keeper, Pickford, punting it down the pitch as far as he could. <laughs> that, that was their tight. And you sort of go, no, they really, see the way it's Spanish too. And as well as that, Jude, I'm not, I'm not an expert in football, but you know the, the, know the two young wingers, the boy who turned 17, y Yamal, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the other guy, Nelson. Like, see when they weren't getting any change out of the full backs, you know, going down the wing, they started going inside and started getting uh, you know, results. And I was going, wait a minute, England would never, you know, England have a sort of winger, he goes down the corner flag and cut, puts the ball in, he don't, wouldn't know to cut in. Uh, it was this that's that's funny that's sort of thing. So, yeah. Jude, uh, to, just to, uh, I wish to, England, the final thing I would say, England need a, need a new song, Jude. This one, football's coming home, is just <laughs> wrong. <laughs> it's lost its way home. It was uh, heading home, but it keeps losing its way. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I I quite agree. I think, you know, somebody talked about England playing with a handbrake on. That's what uh, they looked like. They looked like uh, a team that somehow couldn't let themselves go. The way the Spanish played, you could tell they were enjoying the game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was a, a looseness and a style and a dash to their play. Uh, actually, both teams, not uh, the Spanish not so much, but both teams, they've got this, certainly England, this sickening recycling sideways passes back passes, yeah. sideways passes back passes you really get fair i get fed up with that i really do yeah uh, what well, you need you can have that but that should just be the sort of platform that you use to mount attacks and i think spain did that last night yeah. and, and did the other thing is the well the manager the spanish manager he was the manager of the under 21 team and a lot of the players that were on under uh, under his watch some time ago are now in that Spanish team. And Jude, they play with an abandon and with that. And apparently, his last words to them all the time: "Go out and enjoy yourselves." Brian Clough used to say the same. Enjoy yourselves. Eh? Well, sorry, Jude. But I think Brian Clough used to say the same. Uh, uh, you know Go that was the way it was. Anyway, and then, and then of course, Jude Donegal, my Donegal last night, yesterday. Oh, and oh, that, and, uh, that was sad. That was sad, really. Um, I I think were they the authors of their own downfall because they had five scoring chances, and they at blew. least, yeah. And, no, as well, and I think they ran out of steam as well, Jude. Yeah. What's that again, Pat? I think they ran out of steam, Jude. Towards oh, them, yeah. yeah, Donegal yeah. teams are very, very fit. But for uh, some reason, they, they seem to have, you know, I don't know what it was about. Maybe it was a very warm day. Maybe they'd put in so much effort. But whatever, Jude. And as well as that, they did, as you said, Jude, they, they, on a couple of cases, that ball just dropped right into the goalie, the Galway goalie's yes. hands. Yeah. And Jude, on a, on a tight match, uh, those scores make the difference. You or lack thereof. Can't afford to do that. I thought when Donegal played in the first half, they were going to win it. In the yeah, second I half, that. I could tell that they weren't going to win it. Uh, yeah. Which is very sad. Uh, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, we are so stupid about the Euros uh, that mm. there uh, uh, can't be a god who we show ourselves so stupid. But then yeah. uh, perhaps there is a god because England lost the Euros. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know something, I think the England, 
you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to have a look at the whole way they play international football. But anyway, Jude, that's a and anyway, Jude, without question, the biggest story of the weekend was the shooting oh. or attempted shooting of Donald Trump. What's uh, your view on that? Wow. Well, um, there's a couple of things I'm going to say. Um, one is he he presented himself. He was presented as in the in the photographs we saw as a Christ-like figure, you know, yeah. almost like the crown of thorns, the the, the blood yeah. running down his face. Yeah. Um, uh, I noted that the shooter was killed, and I'm always yeah. uh, struck by the fact that almost always in these cases the shooter is killed, which mm. is an odd thing. Because if you can capture him, you can then find out what, what was the motivation, were there any other links, etc. I I get a bit suspicious of that, or critical at least, because suspicious if in fact they're trying to hide something uh, and they kill him before he can sort of spill the beans, or uh, inhuman in that. I can't believe that the, the Secret Service men and so on couldn't have captured that guy. They didn't have to kill him. He's a 20-year-old. He probably wasn't a particularly brilliant marksman. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they could have taken him. Do you not think so? Or am I being... Uh, Jude, there's something very... Uh, no, it was, all right, let, let's be honest. There was an assassination attempt, but there's still something odd about it, right? For starters, you know, how come uh, Trump... Within, uh, the first thing he did after alleged I know being shot was, let me put my shoes on. <laughs> then he... Then he then, uh, did he lose <laughs> his shoes? Why did he lose I, I, his he shoes? He must have taken off his shoes. And and then the next thing he's pumping his fist, fight, fight, fight. Now, Jude, let's be honest. If you were a a, a, a guy with a high powered rifle and just shot at you and all the rest, of it, there was something you know. There's something just odd about that. I don't know what it is, and I can't. And then within literally within hours, and I mean hours, even, the his people had photographed, sent out this photograph of him, like as you said, the Christ like figure, like the hero at Iwo Jima with the American flag. And you're going, what's going on here? And they're already making it a big fundraiser. And, and, and as you said now, uh, there was a guy on Sky last night. He said, this shows Donald Trump a strong, by contrast, Joe Biden this week. And it's a certain now, Joe, uh, Donald Trump has nailed on to be next president of America and so on. But uh, Jude, here's another point I wanted to run by. Uh, one, uh, J.D. Valens, I think his name, he, he wrote the book Hull Billy Elegy, and apparently he's he sort of nailed on to be uh, Trump's vice president running candidate. And he blamed the left for the rhetoric against Donald Trump. And I thought, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's, uh, look, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you make of that? I, th I think it's probably rubbish. But of course they would. I read that report uh, that Vance had said that, and I just, you, you just sit there with your mouth hanging open. I mean, uh, how, how ridiculous. But you see, people readily believe that which they desire. And uh, yeah. there's a lot, there's a good big appetite among the far right or the right uh, for that kind of stuff. That's all the fault of the left. And uh, that's why he was shot. I want to say something now that I said in a blog, but uh, I, I don't expect anybody to agree with me. But I would introduce the possibility, at least the possibility, that the whole thing was staged. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying I come, I'm a conspiracy theorist. But just think for a moment. What did we see on screen? We saw Donald Trump speaking, and then with the he, he was in profile, yeah. and then he put his hand to his ear as if he'd been stung, as they said, and then he vanished from view. Mm -hmm. And then a few seconds later, he came up, and his ear, I couldn't see any damage to his ear, but his ear certainly was closed in what looked like blood, and he had a few mm -hmm. almost artistic streaks down his face. Yeah. Uh, and then he says, the first thing he says is, fight, fight, fight. And you get this wonderful photograph of the stars and stripes, him in the fist up, his face streaked with blood. Just to, I, I couldn't help thinking there's a bit of choreography going on here. Uh, yeah. could, it's just conceivable that the whole thing was a mock-up. We didn't see, I didn't see any pictures of mutilation of his ear. I didn't see a bullet striking his ear. He vanished and then he came up. How either he's an extraordinarily strong person, I mean, emotionally, or else yeah. something else. Do you think what would you um introduce the possibility that the thing was fake up? Because uh, if, if it was a fake up, it suited, suited him. Uh, do, right. There's there's all this sort of uh shades of Lee Harvey Oswald that there's something yeah. that doesn't, doesn't add up here. 
I mean, dude, I, I am not saying that as like yourself, that I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and, and maybe, but here, right, dude, this young fellow, uh, what's his name? I wrote it down, Th Thomas Matthew Crooks, who's 20. Apparently, he was quite a bright student. He lived in a wealthy suburb. He was a registered Republican, mm. so, uh, you know, and so on. Was he suckered in by someone, you know, to say, look, for somebody, and dude, was there a bit of tomato sauce or something? You just, and by the way, there's, there's something not, dude, I can't put my finger on it. But, like, I, I think Trump's reaction after being shot at a rally like this, like, you know, most people would have been first thing first, get me to hell out of here. There's a, somebody shooting and so on. So I said that, fight, 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 you know. And by the way, Donald Trump, there, there, I've read quite a lot over the years, he was considered a physical card. Where did he suddenly get the balls? He sort of do all this. He, this is Captain Bonespur, the guy who wouldn't join the army in case he got shot. So where's all this sort of stuff coming out? Anyway, but it's, it's just a just sort of uh, a strange sort of thing. But, but but anyway, hey, by the way, right, right, because that's we, we're not going to add anything. Here, oh, here, are, right. I'm going to add something, Pat. I'm going to add oh, something wait. to that. Did you know that Sammy Wilson has reacted to this attempt to take the life of uh, uh, Donald Trump? No. He, he talked with the Belfast Telegraph and he told them when he, that is Mr. Trump, walked off the stage raising his fist after nearly getting shot. It was sort of like him having a Northern Ireland attitude, attitude saying, no surrender. <laughs> Apparently, Sammy's, Sammy's uh, constituency office in Carrick Fergus had a few yeah. ball bearing attacks and broke windows and so on. Yeah. I, I would have guessed by people, maybe the TV or who knows. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, people who were critical of him. And there aren't too many uh, Republicans about Carrick Fergus, in my experience. I would do it very much. Eh? So, uh, but he's, he's, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and saying, hey, tough man. And he's just like us. We're tough too. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Sorry. Dream on, Sammy. They both, they both sound fake to me. I, I honestly, the more I think about it, uh, I, I, I could be wrong, but I, the more I think about it, I, I would be suspicious of Trump. I really would be suspicious of this. He's uh, capable of it. He would lie. He would do oh, he's, he is, like He has stuffed every person that nearly worked for him. He has conned people. Uh, he's not allowed to uh, run a charity in New York. He, uh, he's... Uh, 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 all his competitors say you can't trust him. He, you know, the art of the deal is, you know, he's con more people and sure he was known as Don the con. And so, <laughs> what, you know, sir, whatever. Anyway, Jude, because we're, aren't we keeping us tight? I have to get on. You mentioned Sammy Watson. Did you see the Orange Parade on Saturday? Oh, where a young yes. lady, scantily clad. Jude, I didn't see it myself, but it, uh, apparently it's gone viral on uh, social media. I this young lady was walking along in the Orange Parade. Scantily clad. Now, I'd love to know what she was doing there and why uh, the Orange Order. Nobody had any problem with her. But anyway, she came up to the camera. She, she quite literally got her boobs out, or at least one of them out, and flashed it. Now, Jude, when you consider the Bible belt of the uh, Orange Order, when you consider the old uh, traditional, uh, you know, you know what he call it, uh, these people are conservative, the extreme, that they, uh, whatever. And here's this woman in a bikini flashing her boobs, marching along an Orange Order. What what is the world coming to, Doctor Collins? <laughs> Standards are slipping. I I saw that video, but actually, Pat, I immediately assumed it was a fake. I really uh, did, I, and I sort of a humorous prank. I, I I couldn't, I can't see because the guys, there was nobody rushing to take her off the parade. She was parading. Yeah, that's what I thought it was all. Uh, happily, and did you say she was from Mahi Arn? Uh, apparently, I, did I, let me get this on the record. Uh, that, that I don't know this, uh, and see on social media, her name is sort of given as allegedly, and I'm using the word very advice, a woman called Clodagh Burnford uh, Iron. She could be Clodagh uh, Mc, McArt from uh, you no know, Bally James Duff, for all I know. And that mightn't be her name at all. Apparently, she has several names, and allegedly, uh, several people have named her. I don't know whether that's true. But the bottom line is, Jude, uh, uh, like what her name is or where she's from is a bit of an irrelevance. Just the orange order having somebody like this marching and so on. Uh, I thought it was hilarious and a strange sort of a way, Jude, because uh, I, 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 somebody funny. sent it to me yesterday morning and I, I said, Pat, have a look at this. And when I looked at this, I says, this has been removed. And I sent the word back to the guy. He says, what, what is this? He says, the war's over. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was just showing her way of saying she was very happy. I <laughs> <laughs> to spread the happiness a bit. But to me, it wasn't just the boobs at the front. She, you get a rear view picture of her as well, marching oh, away. Yeah. And her behind is virtually bare. I mean, yeah. it's very, presumably a thong or something. But yeah. uh, I mean, this it was so outrageous. 
But the, as I say, the thing is, none of the marching bandsmen and none of the people at the side or anything uh, made any attempt to take her out of there. So yeah. I don't know. What's so funny about it, it was so incongruous with the whole ethos of the Orange Order. It was like yin and yang or whatever. It was so ridiculous. Now, there's these solemn-faced Bible bashers, and there's somebody walking alongside them, getting their boobs out. And, it, you know, I, I don't even know what it was about. And it just, it was, I had something, you know, I, 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 the fact that it's gone viral or, you know, anyway. Do you remember that uh, years ago? when there used to be a lot of streakers of football games. There's yeah. a famous picture of a guy who was streaking and there's a policeman who's taken off his helmet and put it over yeah. the guy's private parts. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking, that's, I'm surprised none of the orange men took off their bowler hat and <laughs> used it to conceal yeah. this outrageous yeah. slur on yeah. the brethren marching to church, probably, or back yeah. from church, perhaps. Anyway, um, Colin, see, see we're going short here I'm on a good note. Yeah. See, apparently at the weekend on Fubsborough, the community rallied around a group of uh, someone like a couple of hundred um, asylum seekers. Uh, they, I just wrote it down. They were from Palestine, Jordan, uh, Afghanistan, and Somalia. Uh, these boys were moved on from the Phoenix Park, and they were they came to Fubsborough. And the locals uh, formed a WhatsApp group, and these people gathered around. They brought them food, brought them supplies, and organized a rota so that they would be looked after. Now, apparently a group of men with uh, masks on them showed up and started shouting around, uh, you know, racial slurs, but the people stayed there. That's a sort of message of consideration and decency that Ireland's famous for. And June, I was so pleased to read it that at last, that normal, decent communities are coming to the fore, not the far right. Yes, yes, it, is, it does sound more like the best of Ireland rather than the worst of Ireland. Then you, Pat, I must make this point. We talked about this when that attack was made and the riots and so on. Now, how long ago was that? Six weeks? More? Uh, more? Just that. Uh, well, at the time, I, we agreed that, you know, what is needed is some facts on the matter. How many yeah. people are in Ireland? How, many, how are they disposed? Where are they put to? How many can come in? What are the criteria? And none of that, none of that has been made public still. I mean, yeah. what the hell? Well, first of all, the government should have done that, especially this new whiz kid, Harris. I begin to think, incidentally, if you want to get anywhere in the South, you have to have your surname of Harris. Um, Drew. Yeah. And, and, and. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's about time that the public was informed so they can yeah. see whether or not they're being crowded out of their own towns or not, uh, as the case may be. And Ireland is like, full. Things in a rational way. It's just mm. absurd that the government hasn't yeah. done that. It's also absurd that the opposition haven't held mm. them to account on that particular point. Say yeah. to them, you know, where are the figures of incoming immigrants? Yeah. Where are the figures of people who are fleeing from persecution as distinct from people who are coming as economic migrants? Yeah. Uh, where, where, how do you decide where you're going to send people? What contact do you have with the different uh, yeah. places? It's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's so obvious. I mean, I, I'm not a very good organizer, but at least I can see how you, you need to get that thing into some sort of, uh, I don't know, shape. Yeah. So people, uh, yeah, that uh, it's based on facts, not uh, yeah. and sort of supposition. Ah, it's pathetic, pathetic. Anyway, have you a final thing to leave us with? Well, that was my final thing, uh, and we're 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 sticking to our twenty minutes, and we're there. Are uh, we at twenty minutes now? Got time yes. flies when you're having fun. That's what I was. I I think I saw um, that woman you were talking about from my yarn. There was a bubble coming out of her head, and it said the same thing. Time flies when you're having a fun. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Okay, Pat. All the best. Bye.